Before we begin, I'd just like to mention that while I will try to cover most of the important rules of the game, this will not be a fully comprehensive tutorial but is rather meant to introduce the most important aspects for you to be able to start the game as soon as possible. The clips for the following video were captured in PC and only utilizes the base game of Dominion. Dominion is a digital adaptation of the deck building game of the same name by Donald X. Vaccarino. This version of the game was developed and published by Templegate Games. In Dominion, you and other players will build your personal deck of cards that represents, well, your Dominion. Player decks will start out small, and throughout the game, you'll be adding various cards to your deck from the supply here at the top half of the screen. These cards provide resources, victory points, and special abilities. The goal is to score the most victory points at the end of the game, and the game ends either when the province pile is empty, or three other supply piles are empty. The game is played in a series of turns, with each turn consisting of three phases. The action phase, the buy phase, and the cleanup phase. During the action phase, you'll be able to play one action card as indicated here by the gear symbol on the left side of the screen. There are cards that can increase this number, which we will explain in a second. A white border around a card indicates an action card, but by right clicking on a card, we can also see its type noted here at the bottom, which in this case, both of these cards are action cards. Cards you can play from your hand during the action phase are highlighted in green, and to play a card, you can simply click on it. Each card will provide different effects which you can see by right-clicking on the card. I won't be going over all of the card effects as there's quite a lot, but we should be able to tackle a few important ones. Let's take a look at an example of an action phase to properly see everything we've discussed so far. In this example, it's currently our turn. We currently have two action cards, but as we can see here, we can only play one of them. The workshop will allow us to immediately gain a card. Take note that unless stated otherwise on the card itself, any cards acquired goes directly to your discard pile and cannot be played immediately. Going back, checking our second available action card, we can see that the laboratory provides two additional cards to us for the turn and one additional action. This is one of the ways to increase the number of action cards we can play in one turn. So in order to maximize our turn, we'll spend one action to play the laboratory which will give us an additional action, which we'll use to play the workshop. During the action phase, treasure cards can be played to bank resources that will be used during the buy phase to purchase cards from the supply piles. Here, on the left side of the screen, we'll find our current available resources. Right next to it, we'll find the maximum number of cards we can purchase during our current turn, which by default is 1. Take note that some action cards can increase this number as well. For example, the festival card aside from giving us two additional actions and two resources, increases our buys by one. After spending all of our actions and moving on to the buy phase, we can now choose which card or cards we'd like to add to our deck. All the cards that we can afford with our current resources will be highlighted. The cost to purchase each card can be found on the bottom left side of each card in the supply. The number on the right side indicates how many cards are left in each pile. The green cards represent victory cards. As mentioned earlier, these are totaled up at the end of the game to indicate the winner. However, victory cards still go to your deck and can be drawn during a turn, even though they don't do anything. While they provide points at the end of the game, taking too much victory point cards early in the game can clog up your deck and lead to useless turns, with nothing to do. So it's important to gauge if it's the right time to start collecting victory cards. The purple cards are curse cards that decrease your victory points at the end of the game by 1 per card if they remained in your deck. They are usually gained through attack cards played by other players. For example, the witch card, which is an attack card as indicated here, forces other players to gain a curse card when played. The yellow cards are treasures. When played, these provide the indicated amount as resources which is used to purchase cards from the supply during the buy phase. They do not require an action for them to be played. And the cards at the center, as we already know, are the action cards that provide different effects when played. Again, you can right-click on each one to see what effect they provide. One more important card type we haven't discussed are reactions. Here's an example. Reaction cards have blue borders around them, and again, their type is indicated here at the bottom of the card. They can usually be played out of turn but require a trigger for you to be able to do so. For example, the moat card allows you to play it when you're targeted by an attack card, so that you're unaffected by the attack. Some card effects will allow you to trash cards from your hand. For example, the remodel card allows us to do this, and in addition, allows us to gain a card. 
This is a way to get rid of weak cards from our deck so we can no longer draw them and they won't clog up our deck. It can also be a way to get rid of curse cards that, as mentioned earlier, decreases our victory points at the end of the game if they stay in our deck. This phase is mostly automated and happens quickly so I won't be able to show it off properly. Any remaining cards in your hand are discarded and you draw 5 new cards from your deck. Aside from played and leftover cards, bought cards also go directly to your discard pile as mentioned earlier. Once your deck runs out, your discard pile will be shuffled to become your new deck. Any remaining resources, actions, and buys also go away during this phase, meaning each turn, you start with 1 action, 1 buy, and 0 resources. To reiterate, the game ends once the province pile is empty or 3 other supply piles are empty. And at the end of the game, all victory points acquired will be totaled and the player with the most victory points wins. In the event of a tie, the tied player who took fewer turns wins the game. As I mentioned earlier, this isn't a fully comprehensive tutorial. The game comes with a lot of cards that can do a lot of different things. There are also expansions available for the game that adds new cards and mechanisms, but I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. Regardless, the information provided should be enough for you to be able to start the game knowing what you can do, what you'd like to do, and how you will go about doing those things. Thanks for watching.